Joining me now is broadcaster Craig Foster and New South Wales One Nation leader Tanya Mihalik. Hello, Hi guys. Happy nice Friday. Here we are again, nice a week later. Thanks for joining us. Craig, we'll start with you. I mean, based on these figures today, is it time we get serious and have a serious conversation about immigration policy? Really great question. And, and uh, you know, what you said there is that, you know, what is really the underlying issue and what is the serious issue here? Um, mm -hmm. In my view, everyone who's talking about this and only about migration mm. and blaming the housing on that mm. can o only really should do so, if we're being fair, mm. if they're really committed to solving the housing crisis. Right. So, you know, we've got a lot of people now saying, um, you know, that all of these numbers of people coming are a big problem. Mm. Uh, and, you know, that's putting further uh, pressure on housing. And that, that may well be right. It's mm. undoubtedly right. Mm. But the question is, have those people been advocating for you know, a, a solution to housing. I mean, we've had that conversation in the last probably six months, I think, in Parliament. Uh, and uh, anyone who's now talking about this and saying, well, this is putting all pressure on Australian families and all this stuff, hopefully, to be consistent, what they should have been doing is say, well, we have to solve it. I mean, the, the, the fastest rising section of Australia who's becoming homeless is over 50 age women. Which is shocking. It's Which shocking is absolutely statistic. shocking. So are we going to solve it as a country or not? And the thing about I heard from the person there, I read the comments, mm. the person from, I think, Institute of Public Affairs, yeah. they said it's putting pressure on housing, uh, roads and hospitals and all these things. And my question is, I say this, and that's fantastic that you raised all that. How are we solving those things? Mm. You know, like I think it's ridiculous that here in Sydney, for example, you know, every second road that we go on, we're paying tolls. You know, the, oh, the yeah. hospitals and the Medicare yeah. system, you know, every time we talk about putting dental and things that every Australian should have access to for yeah. free, in my view, yeah. uh, we, you know, we back away from that. Yeah. But now we say that, okay, well, you know, the people coming into the country are the big problem. Actually, the problems are the problem. Mm -hmm. And we haven't invested in social housing. We mm -hmm. haven't got people off the street. And yeah. We haven't invested in housing. Yeah. I mean, when COVID hit, for example, um, you know, I thought it was wonderful. What Australia did said, yeah. well, look, homeless people on the street, they're just Australians who don't have a house. Of course. Actually, we actually put them in hotels. Well, I mean, because gosh, we said, I mean, look, that, that was a whole well, wasn't that different, happened? That was a whole yeah. different period yeah. of time. That's right, but we yeah. showed that we could do that. And yeah. the reason we did it is because, you know, so what, it was a risk to all of us, okay. right? But yeah. then what happened okay. is we just threw them back out on the street again. So uh, I don't support any well, people living in tents. In I mean, Australia. I think, look, there obviously needs to be a broad discussion about housing in this country. Yeah. But, Tanya, do you think that population is being fueled by the immigration rate? Uh, look, it is. And, um, Look, there has not been any mandate for Big Australia, OK? The problem is, though, uh, and it's interesting that point made earlier, um, that it was Kevin Rudd, the last record of, of yes. arrivals in January was yes. January 2009, mm. when Labor was a first-term Labor government back then. Mm. We're back again now, aren't we? History repeats Here we go. itself. Here we are. Labor in its first term uh, under Albanese is also now putting, um, it, you know, the upper ante when it comes to uh, migration levels. Uh, I, I accept what Craig's saying. The problems already were there. Of course, we know that, right? We are in a housing crisis, so why would you take more migrants in, mm. in this current climate? Last year, Albanese amended the National Housing Accord in mm. August, OK, mm. from a, a million houses to be built uh, in the next five years to 1.2 million. Mm. Um, he did so at a time when uh, the Masters Builders... Uh, the Housing Industry Association and a plethora of other associations said to him, we cannot meet those targets and we certainly can't meet those housing targets Correct. in the next 24 to 30 months. Yes. Indeed, the Premiers, Labor Premiers like Chris Minns, Chris Minns same uh, thing. also early yes. side of caution and said we can't meet those housing mm -hmm. targets. So knowing this, Albanese still went ahead with increasing migration in Australia, mm -hmm. despite knowing that he couldn't meet the housing targets for people in Australia, Correct. let alone new arrivals. Yeah, well, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. What the right, the right is Absolutely. doing uh, right now. Look, let's move on because Matilda star Sam Kerr has been spotted for the first time since she was charged with racially harassing a London police officer. She popped into Chelsea Football Club to attend a training session. Uh, Craig, you kicked up a bit of a media storm, yeah. I, would, I would describe this week, for apologising to Sam Kerr and suggesting that her alleged comments weren't racist. It was a, a, quite a backflip on your end. You copped a bit of backlash. 
this well, week that's in normal. Parliament. That's, yeah, that's, that's normal great. when you come out with, yeah. you know, an opinion. Uh, but do you stand by what you said? Yes, yeah, so I said the same thing on the show here last week. Yeah. And what you said at the start of this com uh, conversation is really important. You said we need to have courageous conversations that we always steer away from. Absolutely. That was your opening, right? It's so true. Okay, yes. fantastic. Yeah. And, and I thought, here, this right? is great, <laughs> right? Here. Because this yeah. is exactly what we need to have now. Yeah. And so what the last week has uncovered, and I said this last week, including for me, is terminology firstly, how do we approach this that allows people who look like me mm -hmm. to feel as though we're not being attacked, mm -hmm. which clearly many people do in the country, according to, you know, not just media, but a lot of messages I receive. And that's important because I can see how people feel. But I also see the fact that we don't really know what we're talking about when it comes to the actual issue of racism in Australia because we're not educated on it. We always avoid it, as I said last week, yeah. and we're deeply uncomfortable about it. Yeah. So sport has an, a, a responsibility when it comes out through sport, so everyone has to talk to it. Uncomfortable about it, okay? Yeah. Was the yes. racism is just that I think you called it out initially for what it was, and then you became uncomfortable about it. No, what I, I'm not uncomfortable talking well, about racism. I'm very comfortable on, talking about it. You changed your position on, on Sam Yeah, that, that's because I think we should learn, and I'm not uncomfortable with learning. Don't I like to change my position. Why don't we wait for the court case? I like to change my position, Why don't we wait for the court case? So I'm not the person, sorry, I don't want to yell at you, but I'm not the person I was last year or 20 or 30 years ago, and I hope nor are you, and nor should Australians watching this show be. We all learn. That is the point. Hey, That's why I'm comfortable of saying your position. I, I can change my position from now until the end of the year. If you convince me of something, Tanya, I'm happy to change my position here. That's what Australia should be about. Yeah. That's why we're a democracy. But let's just get to racism. So uh, what sport did this week? We also had a big issue in AFL with some historical racism coming out. And, what's, and what it's kind of exposed is that we freak out as a country. Um, we don't want to talk about it. We want to condemn everyone. Uh, and... Uh, you know, as I've said this week, other people then say, oh, well, Craig, you know, why, why, um, uh, you know, why are you making us feel uncomfortable? Why do you feel uncomfortable? And I've been very clear to say this. I'm very, I'm immensely proud of my heritage and there are no, there's no prouder Australian in this country, right? Um, so no one should ever consider that. But I just want to make sure that we understand that there, there are communities and people in Australia who are treated differently to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, and when we understand that, we understand actual racism, which yes, means okay. not well, not what you call a racial slur, not, you know, right. you're a white so-and-so and da-da-da-da, -and -so yes. which people have said to me. Of course. Um, um, yes. It's uncomfortable. I, it's I uncomfortable. said last week it's yes. offensive, it and I've said, yeah, I've said clearly... Mean, that it's offensive, right? yeah. Last happens? week I said it's, it's, a I said it's completely wrong, and yeah, I have, okay. I've been consistent right. in saying Turn what down. Sam did, I, in my view, is wrong. Mm -hmm. But the issue of racism is a much broader and much deeper issue that right. we need to discuss. All right. Well, I want to move on from this, but, but Tanya, I mean, obviously you disagree with Craig on this point, and we will let the courts decide what yes. happens here, but does it raise a broader problem, like what Craig said, about the terms of racism in this country? Uh, look, I, I think that the left are finding it really difficult at the moment to deal with this issue, because if this was a politician or anybody else, yeah. the, the book will be thrown at them, okay? Sure. And I think what's happening here, it's a sports person. Yeah. It's really difficult for people to imagine that sports people can do bad things sometimes. Mm. Well, guess what? They can sometimes. Yeah. And in this instance, um, everyone... Um, it, the, she's admitted to the comment being made mm. about mm. Uh, calling the cop a white cop or, yeah. or what have you. White um, and yeah. in the end, there will be people that will take offence to that. Of course. And, and it is reverse racism. And I've said this before, um, and and we're experiencing reverse racism in Australia. There's mm. no question of that. Mm. And well, if, this is, was reversed, if this was reversed and if it was the other way around, yeah. there'd be All outrage right. on the okay. streets. Okay, but what you're saying is... Can I say this? Can I move on to the court? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. going to be watching it. Yeah. 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 Sure, totally, yeah. yeah. And see that and that's the power of sport. That's the beauty of sport, that we're having to talk about it here, right? And the power of good debate. That's what we're talking about. Let's move on because we do have a bit to get through. Now, Opposition Leader Peter Dutton is urging the Prime Minister to ban TikTok after the US made passed a bill that would ban the Chinese-owned app amid national security concerns. But we know already, uh, Tanya, that Anthony Albanese has said that we're not mm. going to be following the US's lead at this point. Do you think we should ban the app? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say this. As a parent, I think we should ban the app, yep. OK? Um, but I don't think I'll even get that vote up in my own household. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it would take a very brave party to go out to the public yeah. and suggest
yes, we want to um, shut down um, this particular uh, social media platform. Can I say this? Um, the Australian government's already made steps to ensure that government officials don't use uh, um, TikTok, yeah. um, as have many other nations across the world yes. in, that, in that regard. Yeah. Um, I don't actually accept at this stage that there is that level of security risk in Australia, if I want my own personal view. Um, remember, America's in a different situation. Mm. They've got the big five techs. Yes. Um, they've got Meta Platform that now owns Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, mm. and they've got their own real alternative in reels yes. to TikTok, okay? Yes, yes. We're not in that position. Australia owns no social media platform, yeah. okay? We're beggars here. Mm. Um, and I don't think we should be rushing to ban anything at this stage okay. until we are actually very certain that there really is anything. That there is a risk, threat. Okay? Yeah, I think it's fair. too soon. Yeah. Um, and I think Peter Dutton actually jumped too soon on this issue. Okay, well, what do you mm. think, Craig? There's concerns about national security, including stealing data and foreign interference. Mm. Do you think we should jump the gun, go and ban it all together, or just hold off? Yeah, look, I think... Tanya's been really fair there, um, and honest, uh, for me, I am concerned about it. Um, you know, like I often say on this show, I don't have the security reports, I'm, I'm not an absolute expert on it. I am really concerned about the issues around mental health, particularly of young people and the way that they measure each other and all of the likes and but all that's these... that's all social media. I know it is. It's all, yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. TikTok, yeah. Exactly. And I accept that. Yeah. As a mother, I'd love to ban it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so th I think yeah. we need to really look into that, definitely. Yeah. Um, I know that, uh, you know, the Australian government doesn't use TikTok or won't allow right. it on government yeah. phones that have secure, uh, you know, uh, sensitive information. That, to me, is a red flag, obviously, mm -hmm. that we, we should be concerned. Yeah. But I do agree with Tanya in the fact that we don't always have to follow the U.S., because, you know, they have different political considerations in yeah. terms of their relationship with China and what they do or do not want to do. Yeah. Always make our own decisions. I absolutely agree. Um, but I'm certainly open to the discussion as to, you know, how much danger is there. All right, that's a good point, though. We, we are a bit more independent um, from the US and, and their problems. Now, schools have been accused of setting students up to fail as adults by stopping teachers from talking about good and bad food diets and calories. A new curriculum guide for all Aussie schools tells teachers to avoid encouraging students to become healthier and not to allow teachers to use food as rewards. Tanya, is this too much political correctness or is this actually a good move? Um, yes, it is too much um, PC. It's PC gone mad. Um, I, I'm tired of it. Look, Back in the day, you could use the words fat and skinny. Yeah. You can't. Okay. No, you They're out. They're gone. Now. You can't no say way. boy and girl. You no. can't say a lot of things at school now. No. And now you won't be able to say diet. You won't be able to say calories. You won't be able to say weight. I mean, that's just madness. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about um, we actually focus on providing good literacy and numeracy opportunities for young people yeah. in schools in Australia? Honestly, Australia is so immature when it comes to education. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest of the world are producing engineers, producing professionals, and we're just fixated on PC madness. We're raising a generation of wimps. Yeah. That's what we're doing in Australia. Um, and I, I, I get so tired of it. You've, you've, you imagine every child just being so concerned about what word they might yeah. use on that day. Well, so that, it's yeah. too yeah, How do you navigate it? That's you, the question. You can't even use right. yeah, that's it, now. Craig. Are we setting kids up to fail? So the question I have here, which I'm, I'm a bit uh, unclear on, is... So a couple of years ago, two years ago, I think uh, Greg Hunt was the Minister for Health and so on. Yeah. And so he actually launched a national obesity strategy. Um, and that's because there is a World Obesity Day. Mm. Um, mm. And so my question is, is there an issue here in Australia? Is it agreed that there is an issue? Mm. Is there? Well, I don't think it's the issue of weight. I think the issue here is they're saying that you shouldn't use certain words because you're going to cause, you know, affect people. But it appears, well it appears, it well it appears that they're trying to solve an issue that Australia seems to have agreed that it has in some way. You know, yeah, and, and you know, I don't want to shame people who... Kind of okay. okay. Yeah. So my question is this. If that's what we've been telling kids all the time mm. and it hasn't worked mm. and we've got a national obesity problem, then why shouldn't we change the way we approach it in schools? So you think the well, words I diet, don't... calories... So, are yeah, I'm not so concerned about the words. I'm concerned about getting Australia into a position where every child understands what, you know, what, what is in their best health interests and that, yeah. you know, and so that, you know, we can help these kids grow up to, right. to, to be in a better position. Isn't it? Yeah. What about numerous? I think, I, we, we don't well, that's another, that's, an, that's another that issue. What, that's what teachers should yeah. be focused on? Well, we can talk about that any time. As far as I'm aware, we've got a very high no, uh, incidence and percentage of university students in the country all right. and all that stuff. But well, look, literacy, we can talk about. Let's talk about it. Let's do another show. It'd be great. Maybe next week we'll bring that one up as well. We have to leave it there, though. Craig, Tanya, Thank you, Mahalo.
to see you. Love chatting to you, Barry. So good. Friday.